Thank you so much to the Bellarmine Jazz Ensemble under the direction of Mrs. Diane Wyant. That was terrific. It's been great throughout COVID as many things have been hard. It's been awesome to have so many great opportunities to hear from our incredibly talented musicians uh, and the great folks in video editing who make those performances possible for us. So thank you for that. And welcome to the 2021 Father Cobb Golf Classic and Bellarmine Virtual Auction. Uh, we really appreciate you being with us here tonight. We wish we could be with you in person, uh, but it's great to have you with us uh, even in this format. We've got some great things in store for you this evening. We know you're really going to enjoy. First up, we have a special sneak peek, a world premiere, if you will, uh, of a scene from Bellarmine's uh, upcoming musical, which is called Bubble Boy. I think you're gonna enjoy it. Here we go. It is true to me, he said it so convincingly. To know the truth about ice cream, you just have to taste it. I had a chance to know love, why did I waste it? Why didn't I tell Chloe how I felt? screams got no melt there's a bubble around my heart there's a bubble all around my heart not a real one cause then I'd be dead but a metaphorical one instead there's a bubble
Gee, that was a great show we just saw tonight. Great to be back in the theater. That was a great show, Bubble Boy. Bubble Boy, and um, I thought you were on the bubble, but uh, you were, you're here you are tonight, yeah. and you're, you're back for another year yeah. uh, at Bellarmine. And it's great to be in the theater again. Yeah, uh, our last show was the... Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I saw it, I think. It, it was the Sleepy Chaperone. Uh, no, you were asleep. It was a drowsy uh, chaperone. Oh, um, God. Yeah, but okay. it was a great show, and here we are back a year later, and we welcome all of you tonight, because you're going to see a fantastic show. Uh, we guarantee that. Yes, with the auction tonight, and to be get ready for it, because it's, it's another bell great. And we need your support like we never knew, needed it before. <laughs> so Both thanks of us. very much for attending. We need money for our retirement, but nothing else. At so, our age now, yeah. yes, please. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Father Wade and Father Cobb. You are truly a treasure, and I know I speak for everybody when I say we can't wait uh, to see you more regularly. And I do want to clarify, they were just kidding uh, about supporting their retirement. That's a very worthy cause and something we want to make sure that we take care of. Uh, but tonight, all of our proceeds go to benefit direct tuition assistance. Um, at this time, I want to show you another great uh, work from our students. It's our students who are part of Bellarmine Creative Studios, or BCS. They've put together this retrospective look about what campuses look like over the course of the past year. I think you're going to enjoy it. Just over a year ago, campus was humming along, like normal, and then suddenly, everything stopped. That is when the Bellarmine community, teachers, students, and their families, all started having to make a lot of adjustments as our entire lives shifted online. It certainly wasn't easy, but we made the best of it as we embraced new technology and opportunities to connect with each other in different ways. And eventually, we found our rhythm, demonstrating resilience on many levels as our students adapted impressively to their teachers' innovative techniques for remote instruction. And despite all of these changes, we continued to respond to the call to be a community of men and women for and with others. Students and their families raised thousands of dollars for food and clothing drives, organized virtual fundraisers, and led volunteer projects on and off campus. As the year went on, we kept adapting, finding even more new ways to teach, learn, communicate, and connect with each other. And soon enough, using a high-flex model of instruction and following appropriate health and safety protocols, we have been able to bring a sizable number of students back to campus for classes and co-curricular activities. As that number continues to grow, the quad is filled with laughter again, athletes are competing on the fields and in the pool, Students are back in the classroom part-time, and things are starting to look a little more like they did before the world changed last spring. As a community, we are looking forward to a brighter year ahead, and we are committed to facing 2021 together, united in faith, hope, and the tradition of Bellarmine Brotherhood. Thank you so much to all of our members of BCS, especially their moderator, Mr. Jeremy Sasania, and to senior Frank Anderson, you guys do incredible work. At this time, it's my pleasure to uh, welcome to the program, Mr. Ryan Vasquez. He's a graduate of the Bellarmine class of 2010, and he's been working for the last several years on Broadway, where he's starred in three different performances. He and I sat down recently for a conversation, after which he's going to ha uh, do a performance for us from Hamilton. Here's Ryan. Ryan, thank you so much for your willingness to spend a little time with us this evening. We really appreciate it. It's great to see you. Um, I wanted to, uh, I know people, you've been so good to Bellarmine in the past, and I wondered if you could just start off by telling us a little bit about uh, what you've been doing. Broadway's been dark for more than a year, but I know you've been keeping busy. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you've been up to. Yes, of course. Uh, so yeah, I was in the company of Hamilton prior to the shutdown on Broadway. Um, and the day of the shutdown, uh, I was supposed to be playing George Washington. Um, uh, and so they sort of call you and say, hey, you, you know, you're going to be on. And, and in succession, I got that call of, hey, you know, you're going to be on tonight as as Washington. And about 45 minutes later, it's you're not going to be on and um, nobody else will be either. Um, and so uh, since then, we've um, I think the, the community of artists in New York has understood the um, gravity of the moment, not just for us uh, and our industry, which of course is suffering, but um, 
you know, for just the, the world at large and the sort of uh, the, the soul of our community, right? And so um, actually uh, myself and uh, a close tight knit of friends um, started an organization called Swing From Home over the pandemic. Uh, it was, um, and, and it will continue to be, but um, it was really in conjunction with uh, the, the election. And we uh, put on events for state legislative candidates all over the country uh, to raise money for those folks in those races that are often forgotten. Um, and we would bring Broadway performers together to perform, of course, um, and you know give people a taste of maybe what they had been missing. But we often said that uh, we know that folks are missing the performance. We know folks that are missing going to the theater. But I really think what folks are missing is the conversations that come afterward, right? The the car ride home where you get to sort of debrief the show, the um, conversation with a neighbor weeks later when you realize that they were at the exact same performance, right? Um, and what they gleaned from it, and what you did, and and that's what live theater is all about, right? Is is sitting in a communal in, in a communal space, but then being able to share different perspectives based on your life experience. So, we were trying to share our uh, experiences as performers, but also just as citizens, as activists. And so, um, we raised like half a million dollars with these events for, for all over the country. I did not think it would be that way. I was hoping we could maybe make a few phone calls into some districts that we didn't know of. And um, it started out as a group of friends and really ballooned into something. Uh, amazing and you know called about half a million voters in the process as well so um, it was a really really special experience and um, it will definitely continue um, I was I was really thrilled with with the outcome obviously <laughs> that's fantastic Ryan that's uh, really just such a great example of continuing to be a, a man for and with others so thank you for the the work that you're doing in the in the community there that's that's fantastic and during the shutdown, of course, you missed your missed your ten year reunion. I'm sorry about that, but hopefully we can uh, oh, get, to, I know. get you at fifteen. Uh, we'll get yes. you at fifteen or or sometime soon. Um, you know, Ryan, you for our our viewers at home who don't know, you've had a tremendous amount of of success in your theatrical career. You've been in, if I'm remembering correctly, three different shows on Broadway. Um, you've been on a, the the first national tour of Hamilton. You've done just some incredible things. Um, and I'm wondering, you know. We don't want to we don't want to take too much credit for anything at Bellarmine, but I'm wondering if there are uh, things that you learned during your time at Bellarmine and Bellarmine Theater and Bellarmine. You were obviously also really involved in speech and debate. Um, if you think about any any lessons that you learned there from from directors or coaches you work with that you that you carry with you today in your work on Broadway. Of course, you know. I think that there's a common misconception about being an artist or an actor, right? Is this sort of idea that you show up in New York, it's like a, uh, you know, three bucks, two bags, one me. Is that the, uh, the, the thing, you know, that you just show up with your tap shoes and you're thinking, you know, hopefully one day I'll, I'll be on Broadway and just because I'm talented, right? And I think Bellarmine specifically uh, instills in folks that you can have all the ability in the world, but if you aren't the hardest worker in the room, you sort of, um, you you shouldn't expect much, right? And so I think that definitely married with, you know, I think of obviously Tom Alessandri, huge mentor of mine, and he was somebody who, uh, he took what he he did so seriously. And I know that sounds silly, but, I think that as as artists, we don't always we're not always encouraged to do that. It's sometimes thought of as like a hobby. It's not going to be a legitimate career path. It's going to be something that you just sort of do for fun. But eventually, you'll transition into into your real life, right? Where where you'll get a, a steadier job or whatever, and and be able to have a home and a family and all these things. And Ta is somebody who who showed me that it's not embarrassing to care. And I, 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 that's such a, a, an odd thing to say, but I really, I, I remember that truly literally every day. It, it is not an embarrassing thing to, to think what you do matters and to know that what you do is changing people's lives and changing people's minds and, and their souls and their hearts. Right. And so, um, I think just walking into every room and sort of it's a fine line between between this concept that we're talking about and like drinking Kool-Aid, but I think it's all sort of the same, right? It's like just being able to walk in and unabashedly drink the Kool-Aid and just think to yourself, you know, I'm going to take this seriously because it's going to allow other people who watch this to take it seriously and be changed by it. And so um, that lack of cynicism, that total, that total immersion into what we do, and that's not just being an artist, that's everything, right, um, is only helpful. And so I think that that's something I, I always 
every day really, really do think about um, is is that if you can just be the leader in how much you give to something that that people will uh, people will will give that energy back to you. I think that's important. That's awesome. Thank you so much for for sharing that. Um, I understand you've uh, selected a, a song for us this evening, and I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about what uh, what made you what made you pick this one. Um, I uh, I've been actually this is a song. Uh, it's from Hamilton, but it's something that um, it, it's a sentiment that I've really been uh, carrying with me a lot throughout this year. That has obviously not been without its uh, struggles, um, especially as an artist, right? Uh, and uh, it's called Dear Theodosia, and um, it's about you know laying the foundations for the folks that are coming after us as artists we were all sort of had the we had the rug pulled out from from under us and we were left with without this purpose um but i think everybody can agree right that your purpose is so much more than what you do to pay your rent and so i think uh you know in exploring that and in exploring what our purpose really is like while we're on this planet right um laying foundations for the folks that are going to take up the mantle in these fights that we're fighting now uh, is critical. And so this song has just been on my mind quite a bit. And as the year turns and as we look to a, you know, a more uh, sort of normal time, right. Um, but, but a time that's imbued with a lot of hope uh, it's really, it's been on my mind quite a bit. So, um, so this song is called Dear Theodosia. Theodosia, what to say to you? You have my eyes, you have your mother's name. When you came into the world, you cried and it broke my heart. I'm dedicating every day to you. Domestic life was never quite my style when you smiled. so smart you will come of age with our young nation we'll bleed and fight for you we'll make it right for you if we lay a strong enough foundation we'll pass it on to you we'll give the world to you and you'll blow us all away someday someday yeah you'll blow us all away Someday, someday Oh, Philip, when you smile, I am undone My son, look at my son Pride is not the word I'm looking for There is so much more inside me now Oh, oh, oh Philip, you outshine the morning sun My son when you smile, I fall apart, and I thought I was so smart. My father wasn't around. I swear that I'll be around for you. I'll do whatever it takes. I'll make a million mistakes. I'll make the world safe and sound for you. it on to you, we'll give the world to you, and you'll blow us all away, someday, someday, yeah, you'll blow us all away, someday, someday, yeah, you'll blow us all away. Thanks, y'all. Go Bells. Thank you, Ryan. That was amazing. And we look forward to continuing to watch your career in the years to come. We can't wait for Broadway to begin performing again. It's my sincere pleasure now to welcome our student speaker for this evening, Danny Martinez, a graduate of the Bellarmine class of 2020. I've been very fortunate. I met Danny when he was an eighth grader uh, and I went with his older brother and his father on our Bellarmine immersion trip to Tijuana, Mexico. 
I got to know Danny then, uh, and right away had a very strong impression of him, and that impression has only gotten higher uh, in the years since. Danny was an incredible member of our track and cross country teams, an active participant in our campus ministry and retreat programs, a terrific student, and just an even better human being. So I'm very proud this evening and grateful to Danny Martinez for coming to speak to us. Here's Danny. Good evening. Thank you so much, Mr. Meyercord, for the wonderful introduction. My name is Danny Martinez, and I am a member of the class of 2020. Even though I stand virtually in front of your screen at home, Nonetheless, I come before you in a spirit of gratitude. Having spent most of my second semester senior year at home, learning online, and now starting anew, also learning online at Santa Clara University, I realize how lucky I am to have attended Bellarmin. As I get ready to move on to my college campus in the next few weeks, it has finally hit me that I did in fact not stay as a super senior, and that my high school years are finally over. While I'm excited to start this new chapter in my life, I'm sad to see, to end such a pivotal and life-changing chapter. Through my experiences at Bellarmine, whether it had been through the cross-country and track team, campus ministry, or simply being in a classroom where Jesuit values are a crucial part of the environment, I've grown both as a student and as a person. To shine some light on our, on our amazing teachers on campus, I've heard from older alumni at Bellarmine that this school helps you succeed in all aspects of college, but especially academically. And I'm glad to report this to be 100% true because I find myself more confident and prepared than other students in this setting. I would like to thank this opportunity to also thank my parents, family, teachers, and everyone here gathered today for making my Bellarmine experience possible. Through your generosity tonight, many other students have and will continue to experience the joy that comes from being part of the Bellarmine Brotherhood, a brotherhood where I was celebrated for my successes, but also accepted and challenged during my shortcomings, a place where I've learned what it means to be a man for and with others, to not only look out for one's own self-interest, but for the greater good of the people that surround us. I'm hopeful that through your generosity tonight, many other students will get to experience the joy and bliss that I felt here, no matter of their socioeconomic background. While this was only a glimpse of my Bellarmine experience, words cannot express the gratitude that I have for each and every one of you gathered here today. And I, grant, and I pray that God grants you the peace and energy to show your kindness unto others. Have a great day. Thank you so much, Danny. That was tremendous and you are tremendous. We are really proud of you and we know you're gonna do great things at Santa Clara and after that as well. We're gonna be watching you and rooting for you every step of the way. As this evening comes to a close, my heart is filled with gratitude. I'm grateful to my colleagues for the incredible work that they've done to continue to provide an outstanding education for our students in trying and changing circumstances over the course of the past year. I'm grateful to our coaches and moderators who've made athletics and co-curricular activities continue to be possible so that our students can make friends, be with their colleagues, and participate in those activities that they love. I'm grateful to our Christian service uh, moderators who've continued to make sure that we dig deep and give to those in need, especially in these times when so many people are struggling. And I'm grateful to our students who've been so resilient, so hopeful, and so patient as we've been through this time. It's been great to see so many of you back on campus, and we look forward to seeing even more of you in the weeks and months to come. And, we're grateful, and, we're, and we are grateful to you, our supporters, for all that you've done to make it possible. We always wanna make sure that any student is able to receive a Bellarmine education, regardless of his family's circumstances. Your donations tonight help to make that dream a reality. You can make a donation now by clicking on the link on the bottom of your screen, or if you're participating in the online auction, by, click, by clicking on the Support Tuition Assistance button. And now to close us out, I'd like to welcome the Bellarmine Pep Band, who's gonna lead us in a rendition of the Bellarmine Fight Song. Thank you, and as always, Go Bells! <laughs>